I want to talk about this because of how personal this is to Orioles fans. So yesterday it was announced that Brooks Robinson, who is one of the best third basemen of all time, actually, if you ask plenty of third basemen in the MLB right now who they want to model their game after, it's Brooks Robinson, just because he was so consistent in so many ways, a solid hitter, great defense, 16-time gold glove winner, 18-time all-star, and he spent his entire 23 career their 23-year career with the Baltimore Orioles, which I believe is still a record for most years with a single team without playing for any other team. He was just, he was the definition of Orioles baseball because he never let the fame get to his head. He treated his fans like his family, his friends, and even during his statue ceremony in 2012, he said, you know, you guys aren't fans to me, you're friends. And, you know, it just shows the how close he is to everybody and within the community. And he's been there since 1955. When he came into the league, the Orioles were only two years old at that point. So he was really one of the first, I would say, superstars that the Orioles had, even though he did struggle coming up and then got sent back down to the minors. But then when he came back up, he was a mainstay, Hall of Fame in 1983, ironically the year that the Orioles won their last World Series. And, you know, even after retirement, he's just been within the organization, you know, going from generation to generation, teaching the young players. And, you know, every time you saw him, there was just nothing but a smile on his face. And he always wanted to just have a good time. And that was just his attitude. And there was someone that said, I can't remember who it was. I think it was uh, Adam Jones said somebody told him that Brooks Robinson's signature is kind of worth nothing now because it's not rare. Like you can find it everywhere. Just because when he takes the time, he interacts with the fans and he signs stuff and he just, you know, it doesn't seem to be bothered by it at all. And it reminds me of this one interaction I had. And Keep in mind, the man was 86 years old, so it's not like I knew him, knew him. But from this one little interaction, I felt like I had just made a new friend. Obviously, we know Boog's Barbecue is at Camden Yards, and, you know, Boog Powell sits there, and I got his autograph. He's a great dude, too. I mean, we just went up to him, and, you know, we had ordered some uh, of his barbecue, which is fantastic. And I had a ball, and he was like, here, let me see that. And he took the ball and signed it for me. And then, you know, Bruce Robinson came over a little later and was talking to Boog, and... I remember, you know, people were starting to go up to Brooks and get an autograph. So I was like, you know what? I'll do it, whatever. So I got up to Brooks Robinson and he sees my ball and he looks right at the signature. I still have that ball somewhere. There's a ball I have that has like multiple players' signatures from past, m mostly past, but when I say present, I mean like the players that were playing during my childhood, like Adam Jones and all that kind of stuff, Jim Johnson, you know, um, those kind of players during my present. But when I mean past, I meant like the players my parents grew up with. And Brooks looks at the baseball and he says, oh, I see Big Boog sign this for you, so I'm going to sign it right here. And he signed it right under Boog's name. And, you know, I was 13 years old. I think this was the game I, my parents got me tickets to on my 13th birthday, 2011. And, you know, that made my day because the Orioles lost that game 7-2. to two. The only two runs were Mark Reynolds' solo homers, including one that he hit up into the second deck, which at Camden Yards is not an easy thing to do in left field. And... That one little interaction, it just made me feel a lot better, and it made me feel like I gained a friend. Like, he was talking to me and talking to my parents like we knew each other for years, which for them is the case because, you know, they watched him growing up, but it was like we had been acquainted for so long, like... It would have just been one of those things where it felt like we went to a family gathering of his and we were all just kind of catching up. Like, he just has that attitude. He doesn't take anybody or anything for granted. And he just left this infectious, you know, happiness around people. And like I said, he never let the fame get to his head. He didn't feel bigger than anybody. He just wanted you to, you know respect him and he'll respect you and you know in the end you'll you'll be his friend you'll be you know basically a part of the, his family and that's just um that's who brooks was and to hear his passing i know he was in bad health for a while so it's not necessarily all that surprising but you know 
it, it's just sad to know that he has passed on and you know he lived a good long life um but he's he's not gone really i mean he'll be with us and the lasting legacy he left on the team and the community i think speaks a lot for itself that 68 years with the organization uh he did so much on and off the field and it was jim palmer i remember seeing him you know kind of get emotional because obviously this is a guy he was teammates with for a long time he said you know on friday they're celebrating my 60 years here in the organization but he goes brooks has been here longer and has probably done a lot more for this organization than i have and that's coming uh, from jim palmer who's done a lot as well from the community to being a broadcaster you know to to being you know probably our best pitcher of all time hall of famer it's just um, yeah, I think when you look at who you would call Mr. Oriole, it's always between Cal and Brooks. Cal mainly because he's like the hometown kid, but Brooks was like the true definition because even though Cal spent, what, 20 years with us, Brooks spent 23 years with us and just kept going. And, you know, Cal did what Cal did. I'm not saying that Cal, you know, doesn't deserve to be Mr. Oriole. There, there's an argument for both, but Brooks is Mr. Oriole to me. Because he was the first star the team ever had, that the team ever relied on. And once he started, you know, coming up, then we had guys like Boog Powell and Jim Palmer and Davey Johnson all come up and, you know, start, you know, doing their thing. And we started winning and winning World Series, winning pennants, making the playoffs. So if it wasn't for him starting out and getting the team to be better then who knows where the Orioles would have been in their history. I mean, it didn't take them too long to win a World Series, 12 years. I mean, that's that's a long time, but for a team that started in 1954 with a bunch of scraps left over from the previous team, it's like when the Ravens won the Super Bowl in 2000. It's like they technically weren't an expansion team in 96, but they won it so quickly, and that was impressive enough. And with the Orioles, you know, they moved too. They technically weren't an expansion team, but to go from what they had to start to what they ended up building, especially when Earl Weaver got there and Brooks being a part of that for a long time. It was just like, man, he he helped build that team from the ground up because he was the first one to get there. He was the first Oriole to really make an impact, and he was the first Oriole that was basically there from start to finish in his career and the first superstar that they ever had. So I'll just finish it off by saying rest easy, Brooks. We'll miss you, the human vacuum cleaner, as they called him. And um, let's go win this division and win the World Series for Brooks now. I mean, we have to at this point.